This is the story of a fictional future that could become all too real. You're going to have gigantic death rates. In the high season, you'll have almost all the kids having an incredible malaria fever. It's the story of a horrific epidemic. Les enfants donc peuvent contracter le paludisme et peut être à l'origine de leur mort. And a continent reeling from 20 million new malaria cases. Suddenly, maybe 10% of the entire population is ill at one time. Society breaks down. Millions of pounds have been spent in Cambodia to stop the drug-resistant malaria spreading, but now with the fear that it may not have worked, the researchers say it is a race against time. In 2016, a new strain of malaria was spreading across Southeast Asia. Drug treatments that were usually highly effective against the disease suddenly had little impact. It will take at least 10 years before other effective medicines may become available. Our best anti-malaria drugs were failing. At one of the world's leading research centers, scientists try to understand why. These are the transmission stages of malaria. This is the, the, the initial stages of the parasite infecting the mosquito that then leads to onward transmission. Attention focused on what was happening to the microscopic parasites that are the source of malaria. When a mosquito feeds on human blood carrying the parasite, the insect gets infected and passes it on when it bites its next victim. The most effective drug treatments for malaria had always worked by killing the parasites in the patient's blood. Now, some of those parasites were fighting back, mutating to outwit their attackers. Resistance builds in, in a number of ways. A malaria patient may have 100 billion parasites in their body, and through random mutations, it only takes one of those parasites to have um, some kind of selective advantage. That one parasite is then free to grow and colonize the whole human. All of the malaria parasites from that mutated line are then free to transmit to mosquitoes and be passed to other people, so that drives the resistance into the population and it spreads further. It's really sort of Darwinian evolution in, in action. The speed at which the parasites were evolving made it difficult for scientists to defeat the drug-resistant strain of the disease. Fears grew for the continent that was most dependent on the failing drugs. The resistant parasites are either in mosquitoes or they're in people. Now, mosquitoes don't fly very far. They fly maximum of about a kilometre. But people fly thousands of miles. So the obvious concern is somebody gets malaria in Southeast Asia, hops on a plane, lands in Burkina Faso or Central African Republic and spreads resistance.
just 30 kilometers out of Burkina Faso's capital, and you're into a zone with a very high incidence of malaria. In the general hospital in Ghana's capital. Four of the eight children here have malaria. The symptoms? The first phase, just a higher treatment failure rate. People start to come back more frequently after having treatment, and you just start to see slowly an increase in malaria. Les enfants donc peuvent contracter le paludisme et peut être à l'origine de leur euh, mort. For now, the government's using foreign aid to buy up six million mosquito nets for its whole population. There was a swift response to the crisis from governments and aid agencies from the rich world, and from one of the richest men in the world. Now, this child we saw I was admitted yesterday in the morning, extraordinarily serious condition. Bill Gates and his wife Melinda had promoted and funded efforts to eradicate malaria since the early 2000s. It's one of the diseases that the foundation is putting a lot of resources into. Now, there's a lot of work still to be done. Uh, the world needs more attention to this disease. Annual global expenditure towards this goal was $2.7 billion before the drug stopped working. Malaria is a very tough disease to fight, and the goal of the malaria community is to control it better in most areas, bring the deaths down, and pick some areas to actually do eradications. In both cases, whether it's control or eradication, you need a variety of tools. In 2018, the most widely used tools for disease control were vaccines and drugs, but not for malaria. The drugs didn't work, and no vaccine trial had offered a definitive solution either. At this point, with the vaccine that we're taking forward, this is what we have seen in previous trials, and we expect this to be the result from this trial. But in future trials, we do expect to develop a second-generation vaccine, which we hope will have higher efficacy. The best malaria vaccine on the market had, at that time, an effectiveness of barely 50%. The need for other solutions was becoming ever more urgent. The following year, the epidemic spread further across Africa. Loads of people come in, get ill very quickly, and this overwhelms health services, it's like dominoes, bang, bang, bang. They'll have almost all the kids having incredible malaria fever. And we know that that drops agricultural productivity, it drops kids going to school. Almost everything we, we're seeing in Africa that's positive, that Africa's on its way to becoming self-sufficient, that would be set back quite dramatically. The debilitating disease was costing African states over $12 billion a year in lost productivity. With millions sick, their health systems began to buckle. Suddenly, maybe 10% of the entire population is ill at one time. The whole, uh, that society breaks down. By 2020, the desperate need to stifle the epidemic was inspiring innovative approaches. People have had a go for decades now with huge amounts of funding, lots of different things being tried. And we just think that our approach, maybe it's not a magic bullet, but our approach combined with others, we think we could make a huge impact. Some scientists decided to play evolution at its own game. They focused on the weaker sex. We actually genetically engineer males. Males don't bite. And these males can't reproduce. So these males go out, they act like normal mosquitoes, they mate with females. But those females, instead of laying 100 or 500 eggs in their lifetime, which all survive, they don't survive. The offspring die. And if you can do that over a period of time, you'll reduce the population down so low that actually you reduce the risk of disease. The way that sterile males are produced is we will inject eggs with two genes. 
The first gene is a self-limiting gene, which means that its offspring will die. The second gene is a colour marker. If you look at that mosquito under a special light, it's got a red colour. When our males mate with females, every single one of the offspring will inherit our gene, which means they'll die, but they'll also inherit this colour marker. It's like a track and trace. This novel approach had already been tested outside the lab. In 2014, genetically engineered males were released in the Cayman Islands to fight another deadly disease carried by mosquitoes, dengue fever. In just six months, the species that carried dengue fell in number by 90%. People think that this system is restricted to, um, to dengue fever or to certain types of mosquito. It's absolutely not. In 2021, the genetic engineers began to release specially doctored males in Africa to help tackle the malaria epidemic. But neutralizing an entire population of mosquitoes was a slow process, and the epidemic was claiming ever more victims. In a remote corner of the West African Republic of Mali, things were changing. But this community had been shielded from the worst of the outbreak by a new vaccine that rewrote the rules. The vaccine is not supposed to protect the human against the paludism directly. It is, we call it, if you want, a vaccine community. It challenged the accepted definition of immunization to protect the person who receives the dose. Instead, this new type of vaccine would protect everybody else. The but of this vaccine is to block the transmission of the paludism. The vaccine will entraîne the production of anticorps. The mosquitoes will then pick up the person. They will take at the same time the parasite and also the anticorps. Even if a person is carrying the malaria parasite, his vaccination will prevent the disease being passed to his family or neighbours. Si 80% déjà des gens peuvent l'avoir dans une communauté, donc ça veut dire tout simplement l'élimination du poids du disque. Ah oui. Health workers here weren't taking any chances. They knew the danger of relying on a single solution. Pour trouver des médicaments efficaces, il faut forcément passer par des essais. Même les médicaments curatifs contre le mali, on les a testés ici. Et, et, disons, les médicaments efficaces contre le palu, on les a testés sur le terrain ici au Mali. Donc la population comprend réellement qu'avant d'avoir un vaccin, il faut du temps. It's time we still have. In 2015, the time and the techniques to ensure malaria can be eliminated, not escalated. Any strategy, control or eradication, it'll have diagnostics, it'll have drugs, it'll have bed nets, it'll have uh, insecticides where we're going out and reducing the number of mosquitoes there. It may have a, a vaccine as well. All these tools are, are being explored. In the race against malaria, every tool is vital to counter the disease today and to shape a better future for Africa and the world if the drugs stop working. Malaria is the most important parasitic disease of humans. It kills more than 2,000 people every day. It's an enormous th threat and uh, it would be devastating for the developing world to see this problem which we had been getting on top of go out of control again. Thank you.